right behind you. Got a look at her when you were unloading. What happened? She just fainted, that's all. But when the parade ambulance came by, I thought I'd bring her here. Excuse me, doctor. My orders were to bring you directly to Dr. Stafford's office. All right, Sergeant, you brought me here. I know where to find him. The youngsters get so excited marching in a Mardi Gras. Of course, they never eat properly so far away from home. What do you think it is, the flu? Wait a minute, you said something. So far away from home. She's from New Orleans, isn't she? Well, I am, but Betty here is from Oregon. Our service club has an honor band. Two music honor students from each state of the Union. From each state? Why? What's wrong? I'm Dr. Clinton Earnshaw from the university. I want you to run a blood test on her immediately. Don't be scared, Betty. They're going to take good care of you here. I want you to put her in the XD room. I want him in there, too. And don't forget, fumigate her clothes. Thank you. Is it? Looks like you have another one, Dr. Stafford. Fourteen here at Bayou and six more at St. Mary's. How many still alive? The last report I gave the governor said there was only a 40% mortality rate. Only 40%. I suppose you don't know how many are still being diagnosed as scarlet fever or snake bite or sunstroke. No way. Let me tell you something, doctor. If I were public health director of this state... Yeah, if you were public health director of this state, I'd make you quarantine this city and lock up a half a million visitors from all over the world. Well, you can't let them scatter. Not until we found some way to isolate that virus, if it is a virus. Not until we found some way to stop it. Sure, sure. With a quick and easy cure for a deadly disease that's so obscure, it isn't even the textbooks anymore. And all you specialists have been able to do is to give it a new name, XB. What do you suggest we name it? Panic? Hysteria? Oh, I'm sorry, Clint. I am too. Only why did you have to send a police sergeant to drag me all the way over here just when I have every lab at the university working? Clint, Washington called. They've sent us some high-powered help, so they claim. Thank God. Who they sent? A fellow named Adams. Dr. Clinton Earnshaw, the pathologist who first recognizes symptoms of our epidemic. Oh, yes, I know all about Dr. Earnshaw. He graduated from medical school at 23. I think we can what? skip that. Hello, Dr. Adams. <laughs> I'm no doctor. You just call me Jeff. I barely got an M.A. This may come as a surprise to you, Mr. Adams, but we told ATW our biggest need was for bacteriologists and virologists. Yeah, well, uh, I had an athletic scholarship once at this little cow college, if you can fathom that. But, uh, never mind that. We haven't got much time. Let's go. I'm not going anywhere, Mr. Adams. He just wants your attention for a few hours, Clint. I can't even spare minutes, Doctor. With all due respect, I doubt very much if there's any way at all that Mr. Adams can help us. Your problem is XB, right? Symptoms similar to Cardinalia, Woods fever, Scarabus toxicana. All thought to be as extinct as the passenger pigeon. But now the disease is back again. So unless you've found a cure in the last couple of hours... Well, have you? No, we haven't. Hmm. Well, then, let's do it together, maybe. Hmm? Come on. There's a jet waiting at the airport. It's a White House jet, Doctor. Please don't argue. Maybe you'll explain all this. Adams? I 
That is a handy little trick. for something a little more exciting, that's all. Like what? Well, it's a science foundation thing. Pretty specialized. And now we only have this one little research center. You'll see. What does all this have to do with my problem? With a blossoming epidemic that may soon threaten this whole country? Did you ever hear of a GP named Henderson? Dr. Joshua P. Henderson? From Illinois. He's one of the few doctors who ever accurately described these same symptoms of XB. He's the one who called it Woods Fever, right? He lived over a hundred years ago, Mr. Adams. They blamed the dense forest for a lot of things they had in those days. I know. But he described the symptoms of 27 cases. And he also managed to keep all but two of those cases alive, right? That's what other doctors claimed, yes. Unfortunately, all of Dr. Henderson's records were burned up in the Chicago fire in 1871, so... Wouldn't it help you to know what was in those records? To know how Dr. Henderson cured those cases of XB? Of course it would. For your information, medical historians have been digging into that puzzle for years without any luck at all. So unless somehow, miraculously, you have discovered Dr. Henderson's diaries in the last couple of hours... Well, have you? I'm afraid the only personal effect of Henderson's that was ever found was this gold watch. It was given to him by his wife in 1854. The Chicago Museum loaned it to me. It has a rather beautiful inscription on the back. To my beloved, my most beloved husband. Adams, I'm really not interested in the mementos of a man who's been dead over a hundred years. Of course. But wouldn't you like to talk to Dr. Henderson? Ask him a few medical questions, perhaps? Sanders. Hello, nice to meet you. He likes degrees. She's got five. Caltech, Oxford. Cut it out, Jeff. Would you like some coffee, uh, Plintesis? No, thank you. I had some on the plane. Good. We're on a tight schedule anyway. I was going to put a thermos in here, but... Well, that is a thing of beauty. Boys certainly have worked fast. What is that? Why, it's a medical bag. Look, everything's Victorian. The 1870s, exactly as it should be. Only, um, seen here? It's transistorized. It has enough power to run for five hours. A miniaturized centrifuge? And we thought you might want to do a blood analysis, so we put a special microscope in there, too. <laughs> Only for heaven's sakes, don't let anyone back in Chicago get a look at these. Back in... Wait, wait a minute. What's going on here? When you made that crazy crack about talking to a man who's been dead for over a hundred years, I thought you meant in a seance or some other nutty spiritualist thing. He didn't tell you that we do time research here? That you're going to travel back in time to 1871? I'm what? Oh, Jeff, really? I'm sorry, but I was afraid you might just jump out the plane. I mean, I know if I were in your shoes and somebody I never heard of said we're going to go back a hundred years... And I think it's time he meets the boss. Dr. Earnshaw, Dr. Cummings. 
I guess you have heard of Dr. Amos Cummings. I was under the impression that you'd moved to Africa, Doctor. No, no, no. I just moved out of NASA. Ran away from my chair in physics. Oh, what a relief. That's a strange reaction from a Nobel Prize winner. Not at all. I just got rid of specialization. That's all. Now, I can start at the beginning. Examine the whole tree of knowledge. Dr. Cummings. <laughs> Are you actually claiming that you can transport me back? Oh, I'll be with you. I'm going to. Snoring all the way, I suppose. Now look, I'll go along with any experiment if it makes any sense, but this is absolutely ridiculous. I, uh... I think I heard him say yes, didn't you? Yes, I did. Dr. Renshaw, my computers are on a very tight schedule. These are the memory banks. The main part of the city back in those days was down here on the south side. Everything quite close to Lake Michigan. There might be great value in going back in time, I suppose. If we could correct our mistakes. No. That's the one thing you can't do. You can't change history. Dr. Henderson lived up here on the north side. Nice, quiet rural area back then. That's where we'll be arriving. First thing we'll see. Just tell me one thing. Has anybody ever done this before? Have they? Of course. Four of us have gone back already. A lot farther than Chicago. There's nothing to it. Jeff, I uh, think it's time we tell them the whole story. Only three of those men came back alive. What happened to the fourth? He came back 20 minutes late. He was decomposed. With an arrowhead embedded in his back. years old. Don't ask me how or why, because I don't even know yet. So we're really just guinea pigs? No. We're all just human beings. And all we have to face the future with is the experience of our past. Unfortunately, there are only remnants left of our history, our knowledge. Wouldn't you like to find some of that lost knowledge? We go through here. Hey, fellas. Safe journey. Four days. We'll have four days there. There should be plenty of time. October the 4th. If we lose four days, that epidemic, well, we could be in the past a whole month and it wouldn't take away any time from the present. How could it? Gentlemen, we are ten seconds from the start of countdown. We're ready, sir. Dr. Earnshaw? Yes, I'm still here. He'll be fine, sir. Let's go.
this it? A nice, quiet, rural area on the north side. <laughs> Where are we? Downtown what? New York? Cleveland? Heat wave in October of 1871. No, this is Chicago, all right. CB and Q, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy. And that sign, Great Lakes Dry Goods, that means Lake Michigan. So the computers made a little mistake. A couple miles air, latitude, and longitude, that's all. Sure, Randolph Street. State Street, maybe. We'll have to leave in the exact same spot where we arrived, back there at the railroad station. Did you hear me, Clint? What? I said we'll have to leave back there from the railroad station. We'll get a room at the Palmer House. We've only got four days to get all the information we want. Well, that should be plenty of time once we find Dr. Henderson. Well, just remember, you're Dr. Clinton Earnshaw of Washington, D.C. You tip your real identity. I'll put us in a padded cell. Jeff, I don't believe it. We're really here. I don't believe it. Maybe now you'll understand why I quit the astronauts. I fell in love with history. It's where the people are. Jeff, look at this. The latest dispatch from Stanley. He's in Africa on his way to look for Livingston. <laughs> Now, is this date a misprint? No, no. That's today's paper just out. Today is Saturday, October the 7th? Well, sure, mister. Jeff, what's the matter? Computers, I should have guessed when they dumped us in the wrong place. We should have been here October 4th, remember? What did this sound like? We still have four days to find Dr. Henderson. Oh, you're wrong, Clint. In less than 29 hours, this whole city is going to be in flames. There's chicken in there. I don't want it to spoil before he gets a chance to eat. And I know he won't eat unless you get uh, reminding him. I just don't know if there's any ice left in the whole hospital today. Well, well, oh, hold on, gentlemen. You mustn't go in there. I'll be over in a moment. Dear, there, there's always ice in the second floor medicine storage. Well, go on. See what you want. Jane, we're waiting. Poor girl. They leave her all alone on a Saturday afternoon. No training. Practically brand new from the old country. Go back there because it's a restricted. It's very contagious. Jane, I thought you said you only wanted to stop by and leave the food. That man said Henderson, didn't he? Excuse me. Lakeside Hospital, Dr. Joshua P. Henderson. Excuse me. I'm his niece, Jane Henderson. You're a doctor too, aren't you? Yes, I am. How did you guess? Oh, I don't know. Your bag. 
Well, is he here? It's urgent. The Surgeon General sent us all the way from Washington, D.C. just to see him. This is Dr. Earnshaw. My name is Adams. How do you do? General! Oh, yes, gentlemen. Uh, this way, sirs. I'll see if I can find no. him. No. You really shouldn't, dear. Uncle Josh is with his fever patients. That's where he's been for the past 24 hours. Fever patients? Woods fever, it's called. There's been a small outbreak here, but many of the doctors referred their cases to my uncle. They all claim that it's the terrible heat and walked away, but of course it's because they really just don't know what to do about it. If you could just tell us where he is. We're in a hurry. And so are we, Jane. Oh, I'm sorry, Clarence. I'm terribly sorry, but I knew I shouldn't have left my uncle all alone today. Please tell the others, forgive me. I'm a nurse, gentlemen. Come along, and I'll show you the way myself. I told you to swallow that stuff. Liquor. There's liquor in there. Red liquor, the blood of the devil. That was a pill in there. Leave me temptation, for the Lord saith unto me. He wouldn't waste his breath in the open. Mm. <coughs> now whistle your horn type, sailor. There, <coughs> 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 uh, now, that, that uh, didn't hurt a bit, did it? May the Lord forgive you. His name's Sharky, Doc. Told me he went to one of them camp meetings the other night. Joined in grace, he said. Well, don't try to talk, son. I heard the word. I seen the light. Hallelujah! Sorry, it helps me to talk, Doc. Keeps me from thinking about things. Like my wife and kid back in Texas. I used to be a sinner like all the rest of you. And then I learned the evils of women. And whiskey. And two in the back. Sharky, you'll be a corpse if you don't quit yowling. Yeah, shut up, you old Shame on you. All of you. Stop it. What in the hell are you doing back here? Never mind, ma'am. For he that useth profanity shall burn in the flame eternal. Oh, shut up. I know you don't want water. These gentlemen would like to see you, Doctor. All right, all right. As soon as I get rid of this, uh... Last pill, yeah? They're from Washington. The Surgeon General sent them. Oh. <laughs> well, I won't hold that against you, gentlemen. How is the old busybody? Fine, sir. He sends you his best wishes. Uncle Josh, this is Mr. Jeffrey Adams. How are you? He's your doctor. And this is Dr. Clinton Earnshaw. How do you do, doctor? How do you do? Oh, well, there's no uh, disinfectant nuts to boot, maybe, huh? Your niece did say this was an emergency contagious ward, doctor. That's right, all wood fever in here, all for me. I'm immune. Do you know why, Doctor? How you got your immunity. That's one of the things we came here to find out. I don't blame for no. Now, that sailor over there probably say it has something to do with my relationship with the devil, maybe. And, uh... That reminds me. How couldn't they have found their way up here by themselves? I told that young man of yours, keep you out of this hospital during this blasted heat wave. Make it one and have some fun for change. Oh, you did. And all just because Clarence told you that he may run for alderman, I suppose. My uncle, you see, has visions of marrying me to someone respectable, like a lawyer or a politician. And of course, it is quite improper for a single lady to be nursing in a hospital where she might meet other sorts of men. Even doctors. Huh. Doc? Doc? I'm coming, Mr. Younger. Oh, you have to excuse my niece, gentlemen. She's inclined to have a little bit of a, a big mouth sometimes. It runs in the family. I kind of like it, Doctor. Oh. <laughs> doctor, we don't have much time. We can only stay here one day. Yes, Doctor. What medications do you use to affect your cures? 
What was that pill you just gave that man? <laughs> I remember quinine iron and caramel puts a little buzzing in their ears, makes them rest somewhat easier than they think. I wouldn't do anything. Doctor, you sound like a chef who doesn't want to give away his favorite recipe. Why? Please, help us, Doctor. It's vital. All right, sure, sure. Sure, I'll help you. Uh, bed rest and sleep. No, I've never heard anybody. Uh, quinine, caramel, washed down with a little elderberry wine. Now, there's three old favorites. Keep folks from realizing how sick they really are. With maybe a little um, liver remedy, snake oil thrown in for good measure. What the hell do you think? I'm hiding something? Gentlemen, I'll, I'll show you anything. Help anybody I can. I just wish to God I could do more. You see, I... I just plain don't know why my patients live. There you are. I don't know, but maybe this will help. First, he makes blackberry syrup, like they used to for cholera and summer complaint. And then he uh, soaks the currants, adds citron, angelica. Wait a minute. I missed something. Does he make a poultice of this? No. <laughs> this, the, the cake. I, I just said that he makes the recipe up himself. I'm sorry. I... A good doctor, he says, uh, should also be able to paint a picture or shoe a horse. I guess I don't qualify then. I'm not very good with horses. <laughs> or chickens either, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Where do you come from? And besides hospitals. We should get back downstairs. Clinton? Tell me, what do you do besides medicine? I mean, do you climb mountains? Uh, go sailing? Fishing? Exploring in the wilderness? None of that. I guess there are quite a few things I've just never taken the time for. How about you? What do you mean? The Clarence that your uncle wants you to marry. What? No, it, that's just because when I was a little girl, I had such silly dreams about a, a young surgeon who went off and joined the army. What I mean is Uncle Josh is just absolutely scared to death that that I'll marry a doctor someday. Well, I'm all ready. Let's go. Wait a minute. What's that? Oh, it's Matins. Time for early church services. God, you've taken a whole half hour. Taken? I thought I'd just been given a whole half hour. Looking a lot less feverish this morning. How, how do you feel? Oh, it'll be all right. It'll be all right.
to rest. I'm all right, Doctor. Yep. Yep, that's what I told the Surgeon General. The Surgeon General? Yeah, I just sent the old busybody a telegram saying thanks for sending you and your friend here. You've been a big help, son. I'd wish you could stay around Chicago a little while longer. Well, I'm afraid we can't, Doctor. No, no. All right, scoot, scoot. Get some rest. I, I did want to put another cold pack on the Johnson girl, Doctor. I, I, I'll do that. Oh, by the way, um... Have you checked with your niece down in the men's ward? It seems that she's having a little problem with that noisy sailor. He, uh, he wants to get out and go to a camp meeting someplace. Bastard nuisance. I'll go down there and kick him out. He's almost cured anyway. He hasn't missed on one diagnosis. Everyone I've checked has XBR, right? You mean that's all you've learned? How many times do I have to say it? Today is Sunday. Between 8.30 and 9, that fire's gonna start. That's tonight. Tell me something. How many cures for Woods Fever have you come up with in the last couple of hours going through Henderson's records? I found nothing in his records. Right. So far, I've checked 20 blood samples, from a patient already dead to the newest a little girl. Do you know how to take blood samples? It's part of my training. What I don't have is a sample from somebody who's already been cured. The comparison, that's how I'll find our answer. Now that's that sailor Sharky who walked out of here a couple of minutes ago. He was completely recovered. Give me the syringes. Where was a sailor headed, you know? He was going to another camp meeting. I overheard somebody saying in a part of town called The Patch. I know where that is. I believe. What a pleasure to find you, sir. Perhaps you saw me at the hospital, remember? My name is... Never mind, mate. I'm in a hurry. I'm on my way to glory. Well, then, so am I. Uh, don't mind if I walk along with you, do you? I do. The road to salvation should be traveled alone, sir. Oh, amen to that, sir. With a stop now and then for a drink, maybe? Like uh, back there at a place called Barney's. I only had water in that fireplace. What are you doing, man? Following me? Sharky, I need your help. No, 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 no let me go. Let me go. I'm late for, for a hymn singing. Now, listen to me. I have a proposition. No! Sharky. 
Does money mean anything to you? Well, now, that is a pretty sight. What is it you'd be wanting me to do? I could always use a little bit more gold for the collection plate. Now, I'm a doctor, you understand, so you've nothing to worry about. And you've been miraculously cured from a very dangerous disease. So now I'm going to give you a chance to help save a thousand, maybe even a million souls. What's that thing? You're the only one who can do it, Sharky. I'll pay you anything you like. Sharky, I'm sure some doctor must have bled you at some time with a pox or some other disorder. Now, this is simply a new form of... seems to be in some sort of trouble. Can't you get him to his feet? Or did you put him there? Of course not. I suppose we better ask him about that. Seems out cold. Give me a hand, yes. will you? He did seem to be pretty drunk. What's that in your hand? Oh, I was dreaming about this little girl. She was burning up with fever and I couldn't do anything about it. Her name is Betty. If you mean the little girl upstairs, her name's Nancy. Nancy Johnson. I'm sure she'll be all right. No. She was in a parade. She plays in the band. She fell down. She... She what? going down. Well, of course. Now, maybe finally it'll cool down a little. I told you, I only wanted to take a nap, not sleep all afternoon. But you spelled Uncle Josh last night. He said to let you sleep. Don't you see? It's Sunday evening. Well, I'm sorry, Doctor. But you were so exhausted, I saw no harm. And you certainly don't look very well right now. Where's Mr. Adams? I, I don't know, don't you? He went on an errand for me. It shouldn't have taken this long. It couldn't have. Well, I'm sure he's come to no harm. I mean, he probably just went out for a bite to eat. Well, 
guess I'll get back to work. Yeah, wait a minute, wait. Please forgive me. I was very confused. You've changed your clothes. You look very, very pretty. Uncle Josh said that I should also take you out for a good meal. And then we can get back to work. No, I have to find Jeff. I'm going to need your help. Now, I know what direction he went in and where he was going. Let's go. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bump you. Are you sure you're wide awake yet? Clara, how far away is this patch place? Oh, a good mile or more. I'm sorry. What can be the matter? Maybe we better take a taxi. A what? One of those buggy things. Clinton, be careful. Can I find you a handsome cab to take right? It's just so hot here. Yes, Joe, please. Who was that? Who were you talking to? Clinton, what's wrong with you? Clinton, get help, Catherine. <laughs> what? I bet this is something those computers never counted on. <laughs> I've got it, Jane. <laughs> XB. Got woods fever. It's all right. Hospital. Fast as possible. Yes, sir. Let's go. Come on. Okay, yeah, it tastes better with a little wine, son. Noticing the way you looked at him, like he, he does just look a little like that young surgeon got himself killed at Vicksburg back when you were 15. Uncle Josh, there's nothing I, to I do. I know, I know, I know.
sorry. Whatever for. For mixing you up. For mixing myself up. Please just get well. For me. Please. Don't go away for a while. Takes. I want you to wait here now. Do you understand? Yeah. I know I'm going to need you soon. Where do you go, Governor? Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, Governor. Which fever? I'm sorry, Mr. Adams, but we just didn't know ben. where you were. We didn't know what to do. Ben, what did you say? Shh, it's all right. Ben. Right now, what he needs most is sleep. So you better leave now. No, I'm, I'm sure that what he'd want is a uh, cortisone injection. A what? Your uncle was upstairs at the moment, right? Go up and get him, please. But he's busy with one of the women patients, and he told me not to leave Dr. Earnshaw. Look, hurry, nurse. There's no time to waste. It's perfectly obvious that Clint wasn't able to tell Dr. Henderson about his lymphatic allergies. His what? And if you're adding calomel and quinine to the antibodies already in his system, well... Uh, hurry up. Get out of here. Go. Go, 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 quick. Got, got what, 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 what like? The answer you said you needed. Sharkies. Push your bag. Here we are. For comparison, you said it might be what you needed for the answer. Remember, you said you can't change history. The cop said Sharky was dead. If he died, if he died from Woods fever before you took the blood sample. I was wrong, Jeff. This doesn't mean a thing, except maybe that Henderson was wrong, too, and Sharky wasn't cured at all. All right. So now what? So now just leave me alone, all right? No, Clint. The Chicago fire has already started. Yeah. Yeah. He failed. I can't save Betty. I can't save anybody. So what do you want to do? Die before you've even been born? Come on, Clint, get up. I'm going to get the rest of your clothes on. In less than two hours, this hospital is going to be on fire. Hey. What do you say about a fire? Like, it's all right. Just take it easy. Where is this fire? I've been thinking I smell smoke. You better get back to bed. That's west of here, ain't it? From here, about southwest. What are you doing? I want you to see this. Where them holding pens are. To me, I got 500 white-faced herfers just a sitting down there someplace. My whole life. Back in New Orleans, you've got a hundred or a thousand or maybe a million human beings. What can we possibly do in a matter of minutes? It's a question I never ask myself, Doctor. If we get back to that railroad station, every record out of Henderson's office downstairs is going with us. Here, have a pillowcase. You grab the patient's records. Maybe computers back home can find something we couldn't. Jeff, this whole thing has gone wrong. We're supposed to leave from the north side, right? How do you know that station will even be there at the right time? I don't know. I gotta go find my clothes.
Just a moment, Nancy. Please? The fire. Honey, the fire's a long way off. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's so bright. Well, it's just because of the reflection from the sky. Now, you be a good girl. Sir? Dr. Henderson? Uh, I think you'll find him up in the women's contagious wars. Yo, you're looking for me? Oh, it's all right. He knows I'm here. Sir, what is this? I come in, find this man rifling your whole desk. No, no, no. I told him he could look at anything he wanted to. I certainly didn't think he'd take any of my papers. Doctor, I... I can explain this. It's really quite simple. Doctor, you'd better look at this right now. It's the answer to that telegram you asked me to send out this morning to the Surgeon General. Who? Who? Yes, who? That's a very good question. Who the devil are you, sir? I don't understand. If, if you'd just let me see that, sir. I will send him a little thank you for having sent me such helpful assistance. Here he says, he says, he says, he's never even hired. But he went named Martin Charles Evans. Here you are, stealing all my patients' records, taking every paper I own. Doctor, please, sir. I ask you a question. Who are you? Sir, if I were to answer that... If you were to answer it. <laughs> Joe, don't you take that stuff away from me. Mister, maybe I don't care who you are. After that dumb way I've trusted you and your friend. My God, what was that? The first use of dynamite, I believe. Fire Marshal Williams is trying to build a fire break. Uh, how do you know that? I know, Doctor, because... I know everything that's going to happen tonight. In the next few minutes, the Union Bank building will be dynamited in an effort to stop the fire. Doctor, I desperately need your records. I've got to have them. Chicago's burning. The whole city will be on fire. This hospital, too. God! The Union Bank is about ten blocks over. Yeah. Yeah, over that way. Huh. A few more seconds, another building several blocks to the west was dynamited. Gas pipes are rupturing. Gas pockets. Buildings exploding into flame. Uh, since you seem to know so much, uh, but what about me? Uh, I'm maybe going to catch on fire, too. I'm sorry, Doctor. I don't know how it'll happen, but sometime tonight, you're going to die. <laughs> Does it? Does like any two-bit soothsayer. First you scare the suckers, and then... Dr. Henderson. Shut up! Show is all yours. Tie him up and put him in a padded cell. Where's Clint? I just got back. He's not here. Well, where'd he go? Well, I don't know. Look, I've got to know where he is. I just said I don't know. Both his clothes and his medical bag are gone. Medical bag? The lab. Yeah, what? yeah, the lab. Get this way. What was he doing in the lab? should be in bed. What are you doing? Never mind that. Jane, do you have any more of this wine? I, I don't know. Uh, there were only a couple of bottles left in the hospital this afternoon. I thought you checked the wine earlier. I did. But down at the bottom of this bottle are Jane. traces of... Yes, Uncle Jane. Josh. You all right? Of course I'm all right. Dr. Henderson, I need you. Where does this wine come from? No, why the devil should I tell you? Please, sir. Please listen to him. The wine. Where does it come from? The wine? 
make it myself. Elderberries. Do you bottle it yourself, Doctor? I need more. There are only a few traces here in the bottom and a few more in the cork. Traces? Traces of what? Take a look at this stuff. The light. Where does that light come from? It's a tiny battery. Sodium. An electric light bulb. Here, I'll show you something else. A centrifuge. For the sedimentation of blood and other substances. Louis Pasteur hasn't even imagined that yet. Yeah, well, I, I, I met Pasteur. Uh, Cots, too. Doctor, never mind that. Look in this thing and tell me what you see. Turn these until the image is sharp to your eye. <clears throat> But I don't know, I... I have never seen anything like it before. Never. Uh, waving fronds, moving bits. Fungus? Spores? Maybe a new antibacterial which works on woods fever. Antibacterial? Anti-infectant. Uh, a product of fermentation like penicillin. <laughs> Doctor, doctor, I don't, I don't have enough there yet to analyze it. I need at least one more bottle. Where's the rest of it? The infection, the product of fermentation. Uncle Josh has more bottles at the house. That's way over on the north side. The fire's between here and there. Clinton, did that Texan take a bottle with him when he left? Yes, he did. Well, he's headed for the cattle pens. That's closer. The sailor refused to drink the wine and he's dead. The Texan drank the wine and he's alive. Jeff, do you think we can find him? We're here. Oh, come on. Wait, 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 hold on. Who are you? What do you want here? And where are you from? Doctor, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. We've got to get that other bottle and take it back with us. Take it back where? What? Clinton. Jeff, we're running out of time. Doctor, I told you I know everything that's going to happen tonight. The explosions, remember? Yes, you told me I was going to die. Good Josh. Your watch. Your pocket watch. Someday it's going to be found. I'll pick it up, open it, and read the inscription on the inside. Your wife must have given it to you on the last anniversary she could share with you. November the 10th, 1854. To my beloved, my most beloved husband, she said.
you do with a wine bottle? What did you do with Practically has hair growing in it. Oh, thank God. Look, we're gonna have to work our way around the lake shore to get back to that railroad station. You know something? Her father died in Chancellorsville. Her brother at Gettysburg. Then some young surgeon. And now it's gonna be her Uncle Josh. He'll die too. Everybody leaves, but still she goes on believing. <laughs> What are you talking about? You have the answer to XB right there. They'll know what to do with it back home. I'm gonna stay here, Jeff. I'm gonna learn how to paint a picture. And I'm gonna learn how to shoe a horse. Yo, what? I can do more good here, Jeff. I've never had anybody who needs me the way she does. She's a ghost out of the past. And you're nothing but a specter from the future. No. No. Wait, wait, wait. Where's, where's, where's the Johnson girl? Uh, I thought she was already out. No, no, they forgot her. She must be still inside. Uncle Josh, let someone else go. Girl. I'll help you. Come back, Clint. No. We have to leave. I can't. I love her. But she's already dead. Let go you, of me. You haven't even been born yet. Let go of me. Clint, you can't change what's already happened. You don't know what happened. It's 105 years ago. Thank you. What are you doing here? 
We came to see you. And to give you a personal letter from the White House, congratulating you on your discovery. You mean the cure works? I'll show you our very first recovery. She's going home. She just wanted to say goodbye. Come in, Betty. Hello. Hi, Betty. I bet you don't remember me, do you? Well, not really, I guess. But I know you're the one that saved me. No, not me. Not just me. And thank you anyway. Good luck, honey. Bye. Bye. But you're being cured, too. And the question is, when were you infected? In the past or the present? Helen, where's Jeff? As a scientist, doesn't that fascinate you? I spoke to him this morning. He's doing what you asked him to do. Because in a way, we could say you've had a fever for 104 years. Imagine. Then on the other hand, if your infection first occurred in the present... Dr. Cummings, I really don't think he's much interested in that yet. Oh, you will be, son. You will be. Perhaps you'd like to run some more medical experiments for us. The Black Plague. I'd what? Clint, we desperately need someone with your qualifications. Now, wait a minute. Well, you've already broken so much new ground for us. Like bringing you back here to New Orleans instead of to our ranch house. Do you mean you never did that before? Well, we had to, Clint, for the sake of speed. You didn't even know it was going to work and you didn't warn me? You've just been slapping us around in time like a pair of white mice in your laboratory? Hello? Oh, yes, put him on. It's Chicago. What happened? Wonderful. Yes, I'll tell him. Oh, we all will, right away. Okay, bye. That was Jeff. He found it. House letters more for him than for anyone else. You think it was a phony? It wasn't signed by President Grant. Hmm. Well, where is she? Nice, it was paid for by an alderman, Clarence, somebody or other. October 9th. That same night. She did die that same night. You couldn't have saved her, Clint. No. I guess I just fell in love with history, that's all.